much for coming. I can tell there's a lot of interest being generated uh, in this <coughs> race and um, thank you very much for coming. My name is Susan McIninch and I'm a member of the League of Women Voters and the League is sponsoring this candidate forum tonight. The event tonight is a candidate forum for the open office of Door County Sheriff and the candidates are seated next to me you can see their names in front of them in case you don't put the name with the face yet. Uh, they are Steve DeLarwell, Jeff Farley, Chris Newville, Tammy Sternard, and Carl Waterstreet. Thank you all so much for running for office and agreeing to take part in this forum. And in just a few minutes, each of you will have an opportunity to introduce yourself, tell a little bit more about yourself, what motivated you to run for office. Um, but I'd like us to get started just laying a little bit of groundwork for the evening. So if I wanna just make sure, I should probably make sure on my own cell phone that the uh, phones are turned off or put on silent and so forth. Um, and then I wanna tell you a little bit about the format for the evening because we wanna give you as much opportunity as possible to hear from the candidates, and we want to give the candidates as much fair and square time as possible for them to respond to your questions. The League has created a format for these forums, and all the candidates have agreed to this format um, in advance and to all the guidelines of the format for your information those guidelines are named on the poster that's on the wall over there, right there. And there are also copies, not on your chairs, but there are, there's a stack of copies of the guidelines back on the back table, if you are so interested. Um, so, the format is that the forum consists of anonymous questions from you and the con candidates' responses to those questions. And you have, were handed cards when you came in. We encourage you, and many know the routine, and so there are lots of questions already being screened up here. But we encourage you and we want you to ask questions about things that are important to you, to your family, to your community, about the office of Door County Sheriff. We do need you to address the questions to all of the candidates, and they will rule out any question that's addressed to just a single candidate. Um, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you like, but please use a separate card. You're welcome to get started, if you haven't already, right now, with questions that you have, um, for obvious reasons, personal, inappropriate questions, are going to be rejected. Uh, and indeed, there may well be more than one question addressing the same issue. So the screeners will allow one question in the beginning, and if there's a chance to go back for more towards the end, uh, they will be sure to do that. And they, the screeners will do their best to pass on to the moderator questions on a wide variety of issues. Um, if you haven't already and have some questions, just raise your card and the league volunteers will see you and pick up the card, bring it up here and, and sort them out for the, for the candidates. So, while you're finishing that up, I can't help but say a word about the League of Women Voters. The League of Women Voters is a trusted nonpartisan political organization. It goes back to 1920, 
um, as, an organ as a national group and goes back to 1952 here in Door County. Uh, and while the organization does not endorse a single candidate and it does not endorse a political party, the League is directly involved in shaping important issues that keep our community strong. The League encourages informed and active participation in government in two particular ways. Voter service is our number one priority. And among other things, we encourage qualified people to run for government, to get directly involved in government. We hold forums like this one to help voters become better informed so that they can make intelligent choices as they go to the polls. The League's second priority is to address public policy issues. And I can name you a couple of broad categories um, around education, health, social justice, the judicial system, uh, welfare, natural resources, just, just to name a few. So the League then works to increase understanding of public policy issues and then works to influence public policy through education and advocacy. League members study specific issues, whether from the national level, the state level, or the local level. From those issues, by consensus, the League forms positions, writes position papers. From those positions, the League is poised then to take action. Events such as these, our educational programs, candidate forums, they're supported by donations by lots of volunteers, as, as you can see, certainly the name tags of the League volunteers. And we absolutely thank all who contribute. The League is a 501c3 tax-exempt organization. And I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, but the League is an organization of women and men. And we absolutely welcome new members. If you have interest in learning more or <coughs> wanting to know more about getting involved, I encourage you to pick up some literature that will be on the that is on the uh, on the back table. You can also access the League of Women Voters website at any time, and we also are on Facebook. There's also a clipboard back there uh, with the display, and if you would like to begin to receive League newsletters or action alerts, uh, just sign up and we will happily put you on that list. So I'm about to hand the baton over to Sandy, but before I do, I very much want to acknowledge and I want to thank so much the people who made this very popular forum possible. First, certainly to the Jacksonport Town Board for this facility, to Laddie Chapman, who is recording the event for us, to the media who has put out publicity so that you all knew that it was happening, to all the League members who are here tonight and who are helping out uh, by collecting cards, by screening, by answering questions. You'll know us pretty much by our name tags. And, um, and certainly to Sandy Brown, who is our League president, who is also our moderator for tonight. So I will turn the forum over to Sandy. Thank you very much. And good evening to everyone. I hope you can get comfortable and fan yourself. It's a little bit warm tonight. This will be a forum, not a debate. In order that all candidates have equal time to present their positions and fairness for each is observed, league guidelines will be followed as uh, Susan mentioned. Because the league is nonpartisan, this forum is designed to focus on issues, not personalities. The views expressed are those of the candidates, not of the League of Women Voters of Door County. And our sponsorship of this forum is not an endorsement of any candidate. Candidates will introduce themselves in two minute statements and will have an additional five minutes to elaborate on any issue during the closing remarks. Candidates will be given two minutes to answer each question. 
Each question will be posed to all candidates. However, a candidate may decline to answer any question. No question will be directed to any one person. The candidates have drawn straws to determine who will speak first. However, the order of speaking will be alternated so that each candidate will have a chance to be the first responder. Only written questions will be presented to the candidates. Ling members are screening. Uh, league timekeepers will signal when you have 30 seconds remaining in your response and again when it is time to stop. Um, in fairness to all candidates, we ask the candidates be prepared to stop when signaled to do so. No flash cameras, motor driven cameras, or other visual or sound recording devices are allowed to be used during a form other than by the press media and the form sponsor. Candidates are not allowed to use audio or video from the form in any commercial advertising. The League owns the copyright to any audiovisual recorded, uh, created <coughs> by our contracted recorder. Campaign materials, including biographical information, may be distributed after the form at tables at the back of the room. All campaign literature should have the legal disclaimer authorized and paid for by whoever. Candidates are invited to remain after the forum to give the public the opportunity to meet and visit with them personally. We will ask questions until 8.30 or until we run out of questions, which it doesn't look like will happen. Um, and then the candidates will be given time for their closing remarks. Let's begin. Um, Steve Delaware War, has um, the first short straw, so he will begin. First of all, thank you for the League of Women Voters for having this and for all of you for skipping the opening of the fair to come out here. My name is Steve DeLarwell. I'm a lifelong resident of Door County growing up in Forestville. I graduated from Southern Door High School and after school I went to work. I worked locally at Hatco and then at Peterson Builders. While at Peterson's, I saw that the Navy contracts were winding down and there was little private work to build ships. So I switched to the night shift there so I could attend school during the day at NWTC for law enforcement. I'd put in an eight hour shift at PBI and then go to school full time during the day at Green Bay. During that time, my wife also went back to school to be a registered nurse. We took what was to be our down payment on a house and used it to pay for our schooling. In 1991, I was hired by the Sheriff's Department. I started out as a jailer dispatcher, and in 1992, I moved to patrol. For the past 12 years, I've had a leadership position on the midnight shift, eight years as the officer in charge, and the past four years as a patrol sergeant. I have an associate degree in criminal justice from NWTC, a certificate from UW Platteville in first line supervision, advanced line supervision training, I've been on the SWAT team for the past 19 years and continue to do so. I'm a field training officer, weapons armorer, and snowmobile patrol coordinator. I've been married to my wife, Tree, for the what will be 30 years in October. We have raised two sons, Corey and Casey, and we eventually got to build that house in Forestville. <laughs> Next. Next. I also want to thank the League of Women Voters for your time and dedication is very much appreciated. My name is Jeff Farley. I started my 32-year law enforcement career in 1982. 28 of those 32 years have been here with the Door County Sheriff's Department. I was hired by the late Sheriff Leroy Klein and have worked my way through the ranks holding positions as a jailer dispatcher, road patrol deputy for 12 years where I served on the SWAT team, technical accident investigator, and was a field training officer. In 1999, I was promoted to the juvenile officer, DARE officer, where I was assigned um, child sexual assault and abuse cases. In 2003, I was promoted to investigative sergeant responsible for the supervision and overview of all criminal cases. Um, in 2004, I was promoted to jail administrator overseeing the completion of the new correctional facility that we built at the Justice Center. This involved developing completely new policies and procedures and training of new staff. 
In 2007, I was promoted to my current position as field service lieutenant, where I oversee the patrol division, the investigative division, and the reserves. It is my responsibility that these 47 employees are properly trained, provided with the skills and equipment needed to meet the goals and objectives of the Sheriff's Department, and overseeing of all field activities, um, law enforcement activities that occur within the county. I have been married for 31 years. Um, my wife, Terry, is a registered nurse at Door County um, Hospital. I have two adult children, I'm Justin and Elizabeth, and I am an active member of Bayview Lutheran Church, presently serving on church council and property committee. Thank you. Good evening. I also thank the League of Women Voters for uh, having us tonight, and I, and I thank you guys for all coming out tonight um, on a Wednesday night, on a work, uh, work day night. It's uh, quite impressive to, to see this amount of people. I'll start off on a, on a personal note. Um, I, I uh, grew up in Sturgeon Bay. I lived in Sturgeon Bay all my life. Uh, I went to the Sturgeon Bay School District uh, for all 12 years, uh, graduated a Sturgeon Bay Clipper. Uh, from Sturgeon Bay School, I went to NWTC where I uh, achieved and obtained my uh, associate degree in police science. Um, shortly after that, I was, I was hired by former Sheriff uh, Chuck Brand as a patrol officer. Um, in the year 2000, I married my, my beautiful wife, Amy. Um, her, her maiden name is Borkovitz. Uh, we have a, a seven-year-old son uh, between us. And uh, so he's going into the second grade at Sturgeon Bay Schools. And, uh, and, and just in a nutshell, I, I just, uh, I love this county. I, I grew up here, I care about this county, and, and I wanna see what's best for this county as a whole uh, going forward. On a professional note, in uh, 1999, like I said, I was hired by uh, former Sheriff Chuck Brand as a patrol officer. I spent five years uh, as a patrol deputy and in 2004, um, I received a phone call from current Sheriff Terry Vogel um, offering me the, uh, the position of juvenile investigator. Juvenile investigator, I've, I've been in that position for the past 10 years. Um, and, and just uh, uh, you know, a quick story, I, uh, when I was in elementary school at Sunset School in Sturgeon Bay, um, former Sturgeon Bay police officer Dwight Crimble uh, would often come into the school and, and give us some presentations on stranger danger type things. And, and I knew then that I wanted that position. I, I wanted to be there. Uh, so I, I am there. I've been there for the past 10 years. Uh, so I achieved my goal professionally. And uh, it's going to be tough to give up if I am elected sheriff. But, uh, uh, but I do vow to, uh, to be active in the schools if elected. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tammy Sternard. I'd like to start off by thanking the League of Women Voters for organizing the event in the town of Jacksonport for being willing to host it. And also for all of you to attend tonight and take the time out of your busy schedules. I look forward to the opportunity to answer your questions. I was born and raised in Door County. I grew up in the southern part of the county and attended Southern Door School. Being a mother to four amazing children truly has helped mold me into the person I am today. Currently, my partner and I live in the town of Brussels. Our three younger children, Brady, Sean, and Abby, attend Southern Door School. Our oldest son, Tyler, is a United States Marine and currently deployed in Afghanistan. I've always been extremely proud to say I'm a member of the Door County Sheriff's Office. I began my career with the Sheriff's Office 21 years ago as a reserve deputy. While working full time, I attended night classes at NWTC and obtained my associate's degree in criminal justice. I also was given the opportunity to, to attend an executive leadership college to prepare me to be a future leader in the department. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to work and learn from two great leaders, Sheriff Brand and Sheriff Vogel. I truly do appreciate all the support and mentoring, mentoring I received from both of them. I was promoted by Sheriff Vogel to the rank of sergeant and then again seven years ago promoted to the rank of lieutenant, which is the position I currently hold in the department. Right now, my responsibilities are to oversee the correctional services and court services. As I go around, I get asked a lot from people, why do you want to be the sheriff? For me, it's quite simple. As a lifelong resident of Door County, as a lieutenant, and as a mother, what happens here is extremely important to me. I want to make sure we continue to have a safe community 
ensure that ensure that our kids have safe schools and that the community continues to be one of the <clears throat> best places to raise our families. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carl Watershed and I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and all of you for showing up tonight. I'd like to share with you the highlights of my public safety career. I spent 35 years in public safety. I've got 26 years in law enforcement and 15 years as a volunteer firefighter and I retired as a lieutenant. I was hired in 1991, so I have almost 24 years with the Door County Sheriff's Department and I was hired as a number one candidate. I was signed to the jail division and dispatch and after a year and a half I was pro promoted to the patrol division on midnights. After two years on patrol, I was promoted to a supervisor. I spent 11 years on midnights, and I am currently one of the supervisors on the day shift. My duties on the Sheriff's Department are I'm currently on the Door County crash team. I'm a technical crash investigator for 19 years. I'm an incident command operator, certified in truck law, and I retired after several years of being on the SWAT team. Outside of the department, I'm a Wisconsin licensed journeyman plumber. I'm a Wisconsin licensed driver's education instructor. And I'm a member of the town board uh, for the town of Gardner. I'm supervisor number two. My education is 120 plus credits in police science and fire science. I have first line supervisor school from the UW Platteville and I have some advanced first line supervisory in school. I'm married to my wife, Gail, for 26 years. I have two children, Carl, who is a sergeant with the Sturgeon Bay Police Department, and Derek, who is a third year law student at Marquette State, or Marquette Law School. Thank you. Thank you all. Now, Jeff Farley will be the first to receive this question. Um, some, I'm happy to repeat any questions that sure. need to be in, for anyone. Um, some of you may have already answered part of this question, but I think there are some details here that uh, people would like to hear. What training have you pursued to be an effective sheriff? What leadership classes have you taken? Seminars, financial management courses, personnel development, group dynamics, organizational? In my present position, I, 32 years, um, I've had the experience of working, like I said, through the ranks. Some of my certifications include uh, management and leadership development, um, crisis management, FBI executive development, um, major event security planning, um, proper, how to properly prepare, prepare a budget for law enforcement, um, I've gone through um, numerous training sessions um, throughout my 32 years here. Um, being third in command of the Sheriff's Department right now has given me qualifications. I've attended numerous schools so that I have qualifications so that I can take these major events and, and work with these major events. I'm a skilled investigator certified in major crime scene investigation, arson crime scene investigation, technical accident investigator, and a child sexual assault forensic interviewer. I have the qualifications, um, just about everything that you can think of um, over my 32 years in law enforcement. Um, there isn't hardly any school that I haven't attended, and being in the position that I am in, uh, like I said, third in command, overseeing all operations of the patrol investigative unit, um, I use these skills on a daily basis. Thank you. Chris. Okay. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. Um, first off, I, I, I can't compete with uh, Lieutenant Farley on the qualifications, but he's been on this earth a lot longer than I have. Um, I, I am still young. Uh, like I told you, um, I, I've been the uh, juvenile officer for uh, the past 10 years. And with that comes just a ton of juvenile related uh, training. Uh, I, I uh, actually, I just got back into uh, Door County uh, about two hours ago. I, I was in uh, Lake Geneva for a DARE uh, convention, uh, a state convention. Um, 
so I am on, on the DARE board, um, obviously, as being a, a DARE, Drug Abuse Resistance Education Instructor, uh, for the past 10 years. Um, I, I, as far as uh, leadership and supervisory role, uh, when, when you become an investigator, that, that uh, automatically comes with the job, I would say. Um, when you're called out at 2 o'clock in the morning to go to a, to a significant crime scene, uh, the people on that scene, the deputies on that scene, um, uh, trust your judgment based on, based on the trainings and, and uh, things like that that we've gone to. Uh, so I, I, I think uh, through the years, being 10 years as an investigator, I think uh, uh, even though I don't have that uh, title um, of a supervisor, um, there's been many times where, where I was trusted and, and, and acted uh, like a supervisor at some pretty significant crime scenes. Um, and I think, uh, um, I think that answers the question, so thank you. Being with the Sheriff's Department for over 21 years, we've had the, I've had the opportunity to log a lot of training hours in numerous different areas in law enforcement. I'll, I'll be straightforward and honest. The majority of my career I have spent in the correctional division, but I feel what a sheriff needs to be is a good leader. And our department is full of great men and women that know their job like in and out. Again, I cannot compete with Lieutenant Farley. I'm not quite that old. Um, <laughs> so, I didn't mean it in a bad way. No, you meant it. I didn't mean it in a bad way. <laughs> He always tells me I'm going to look like him in 10 years. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, I, I truly believe uh, the key to a, a successful sheriff is his or her ability to lead others. And we've all done different things throughout our career, and we have positive things we've done, and we've had some things we'd probably do differently. But I really truly believe that we have a great department, and there's a lot of men and women that know what they do every day, and what they're looking for, and what they need is a strong leader with proven leadership skills, and that is what I bring to the table. I have spent over half of my career as a leader of the department. Our current sheriff has promoted me twice, so I have to believe that along with him and the department, there is faith that I can lead this department into the future. Thank you. Yes, uh, again, I can't compete with Lieutenant Farley either, really. I mean, I am older than he is, but that doesn't make a difference. Okay. But I, but, I, but I have also had crisis intervention training, uh, first line supervisor training from the Uni University of Wisconsin Platteville. Um, I've had, uh, I've been on the fire department for 15 years and uh, actually retiring as a lieutenant. I've uh, had a lot of different schooling f through the fire department in supervisoring are supervising people on fire ground and uh, in incident command. Um, so, you know, with uh, 15 years of being a uh, supervisor on the sheriff's department, I have had the opportunity to uh, work with a lot of our people and uh, and supervise them. That's all I got to say. Thank you. I, I, too, You're old. I, too, am older than Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just a couple of years, though. Okay. Um, my background in supervision is, is through uh, Platteville uh, First Line Supervision course, uh, also through Dr. Neil Troutman's uh, several, a couple of uh, different advanced line supervision courses that I, I attended. I also uh, am a field training officer and went through all, all of that training and was tasked with uh, training new officers for the department. Also on the SWAT team, I'm a 13 year SWAT sniper and we turned uh, what was uh, not a very good sniper team into a very good sniper team and uh, I'm very proud of that. And. As a leader on the midnight shift, I'm the sergeant and responsible for any calls that come in because they're at that time of the night, there's no command staff to fall back on. And I answer to everyone on the, on the shift. So that, that's my credentials for supervision. Thank you.
Thank you. Next question, Chris Neville will be the first to respond. Okay. The budget of the Sheriff Department is over $8 million. What experience do you have in preparing and monitoring a budget the size of the Sheriff Department? What experience have you had in obtaining and monitoring use of state and federal grants? Okay, uh, going back again uh, to my 10 years as, as a juvenile officer, um, I, I have a couple of accounts or budgets that I need to uh, closely monitor. Uh, one is the juvenile account where I'm, I'm given uh, $2,500. And with that $2,500, it's my responsibility uh, to make sure that the, the kids in our community um, get some cool things uh, from the police. Um, I, I buy uh, pencils for the kids to give out at different events that I hold, um, uh, workbooks um, for, for different uh, uh, training sessions that I offer to the kids, such as internet safety or bullying. Um, so I, I, I use that money, I use it uh, wisely. Um, it, it's, it's pretty rare that, uh, that I'm able to give a whole back, uh, give back a lot. Uh, through that uh, uh, juvenile budget. Uh, another budget that I uh, take care of is, is the D.A.R.E. account. I'm the D.A.R.E. teacher uh, in Door County, have been for 10 years, and the D.A.R.E. account is not budgeted by the county. I, I have to make sure that there is enough monies in there um, to get through uh, the school year um, each year when I'm teaching D.A.R.E. Um, so I, I hold the, uh, an event at uh, Jim Olson Motors called the, uh, the Bayland Classic Auto Show. That's the biggest uh, fundraiser that I hold uh, for the D.A.R.E. program. I, I also, um, there's several people in the community that donate to the D.A.R.E. program. Um, so I'm able to make that account go uh, without it even really being budgeted. Um, so I think, uh, uh, you know, and I'm not, uh, I'm really not proposing any big ticket items if I were to be elected as sheriff. I think we, we live in an age right now where, where the economy is not the greatest, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, my family feels it as, as many families in here probably feel it, and, and I think right now is a time where, where we shouldn't be thinking about spending, we should be thinking about maintaining. Uh, so thank you. As a lieutenant and in charge of corrections and court services, over the last seven years I've been responsible for both the revenue and expense side of the jail budget. It's my job to report directly to the chief deputy and the sheriff and determine what needs and what expenses we're gonna have throughout the department. Over the last year and a half, I've been working closely with Chief Deputy Bailing. He has been showing me the ropes as far as the overall budget. And actually, just yesterday, we finished up our portion of the 2015 budget. I feel I have a strong background I have the ability to move forward with the department and be able to take care of the entire budget. It's not as simple as what do you buy and what do you spend. Again, this year, we're faced with a 0% increase. And obviously, we want to continue providing law enforcement services that are good for the community. So as an administrator, we have to take a hard look at each and every line item to determine where we're spending our money. And again, I bring seven years of experience doing that. And basically, after doing the jail budget, the actual revenue from the Sheriff's Department, over 49% of it comes through the jail, which a lot of people don't understand or don't, I guess, realize. So again, my experience, I think, it, it proves that I would be able to operate the budget and run the department effectively and efficiently. Thank you. Okay, not being in uh, administration, I really don't have a whole lot to do with the budget itself. Um, what I do, do as far as I guess you could say the budget was is I take care of the maintenance on the sheriff's department I buy different items that the guys need for their vehicles and things like that and I took it upon myself to go around to all the different auto parts places and stuff and basically shop for this for the best price um, I work uh, being on the town board we work with the town budget there um, are, although not as large as the sheriff's department budget, we still have to hold it down to a, a uh, no increase type of budget. With the snow the way it was this last winter, uh, budgets, especially ours, was hurt pretty bad. So we couldn't fix as many roads. You basically had to go and take money from here and put it there and, and back and forth. So that's my uh, experience with budgets. I believe we need to keep the budget where it's at. 
Um, we can go through with grants and uh, fundraisers, donations, whatever it takes to keep our budget where it's at so we can provide the services we still do provide for the Sheriff's Department. Basically what I'm saying is we, live, we need to live within our means. And uh, I'm proposing not to do anything with the budget at all, just leave it kind of the way it is. If anything, save money with the budget by applying for more grants, federal or state. Thank you. Um, as, as a sergeant, I probably have the least amount of experience dealing with the budget. Um, but I, I do understand how the budget works. I know that we're, our budget consists of 70% of it going to wages and, and, and benefits to the patrol staff and jail and, and people working there. I understand how it works and, and I will work closely with the chief deputy whose major responsibility is the budget. <clears throat> That's why he gets paid big dollars. <laughs> the county board also and the administrative staff and we will maintain a fiscally responsible department. It will be periodically review all aspects to make sure that we are operating efficiently. We'll look into any state and federal grants for equipment and training and I would like to see an interdepartmental committee along with the Sturgeon Bay PD and any fire department to meet and look for possible grants so that we're not overlapping equipment. Thank you. Not being the oldest, but it sounds like I am, I do actually have the most experience with writing, um, the, doing the budget. I've got over probably 10 years with the budget. Like Tammy had said, her responsibility is the jail, my responsibility is the patrol, um, the reserves, uh, the communication center. I actually submit the, the budget, the line item, look at prior years, um, look to see like last year, um, this line item had X number of dollars in it, we had a balance such and such. Um, can we decrease that line item so we can stay at a 0% increase? And that is the increase the county has told us that we have to stay at. We all have to look at because of union wages, wages have gone up so I have to cut in other areas so that I can compensate for the, the increase in the union wages. Um, each year um, I write the, the, some of the grants for the highway safety. We put additional officers out on patrol on given weekends, on given days, and that comes through a grant which I write so that we can actually have those extra patrols. Uh, I agree with everybody here the Sheriff's Department needs to look for additional grants through the state or federal. And I agree with Steve, we need to look at putting a committee together, assigning people just to do that job. There is money out there, but nobody has the opportunity right now in our present setup to look for those grants. And writing a grant is hard, it's not an easy thing. But it, there is money out there and we need to look for it because like the rest of you here, I pay taxes too. And I don't like looking at my tax bill and seeing that it's gone up because of us, the Sheriff's Department, you know, increasing our budget. I'm like you. Thank you. Thank you. Tammy Sternard will be the first to receive this question. What do you see as the strengths of the department? What do you consider its weaknesses? How would you reshape the department? As I, as I said earlier, working at the department, as long as I have, I've had the opportunity to work with great people. As an administrator, I have the opportunity to travel throughout the state and attend different conferences and meetings and, and you know, you sit back and you listen to some of the issues that are at other departments and throughout the state. And I think, you know, as a community and as a lieutenant, I'm very proud of our department and all the people that work there. So I would have to say uh, our strengths is the people, the people that are doing the job every day, the ones you see out on patrol, the ones that you see securing the courthouses. You don't see them, but the ones you talk to when you call the dispatch center. Um, like I said, I think the department is very well run. Uh, there's always room for improvement. One of the things I do as, in my current role as a lieutenant is every year I sit down with every staff member and have a face-to-face, -face. Tammy, Jim, 
not lieutenant, not deputy, just one person against the other talking about the issues and what we feel we, need, we want to accomplish as a group. I feel it's a very effective way to do things and to move forward and affect change. I would anticipate doing the same thing as a sheriff. Obviously, there would be quite a few more people to talk to, but I would be glad to do that because I think a department and a successful law enforcement agency consists of people working together, putting egos aside, and really looking at what everybody's strengths and weaknesses are that bring to the table. So I guess that's how I would move forward with the department, just continuing uh, working together and playing off of everybody's strengths. Thank you. Our department is, like Tammy said, a great department. We have a lot of good people. We have a lot, a lot of good trained people. As far as changing anything on the department, Sheriff Vogel has done a great job the last 12 years as sheriff. The only thing that I would do is tweak it a little bit or add to the programs, things like that. As far as uh, what, we, what we need to do, our strengths, it speaks for itself. The sheriff's department and its people are great. I, I have much else to say than that. Again, our, our strengths are our, our people working for us. Uh, you can't say enough good things about them, and um, I, I couldn't find a better bunch of people to work with, and I appreciate every one of them. Um, as far as uh, a weakness, um, <coughs> staffing will always be a weakness because we, we have such an unusual county to uh, cover. Um, Getting, getting everybody um, enough coverage in this county is, is difficult, especially when you have uh, three or four people working and you have vacations in the summer or training and, and, and getting that taken care of. Another one is, uh, is getting people involved in the department. I, I'd like to see um, more people involved in, in having a say in the department by what I would do is start at an administrative day once a month with uh, all the sergeants meeting where we could come in and discuss uh, what we're going to do the coming months, what we did last month, how things went, go through possible training, uh, getting them in involved in the department and having a say in it. Thank you. Everyone here feels safe. Door County has the tradition of keeping your doors unlocked. Why? Because of the dedication of the people that are sitting at this table, the dedication of the officers that work for the department. Our strength is the quality officer that we hire, that we provide the training for, that is out there protecting you. They are the ones that are the department. Administration is kind of in the back. It's the patrol people out front that are, are the strength of this agency. Some of the ways I, I, I look at and I agree with everybody, but I'd like to look clearly, identify the goals and objectives of the department, kind of to reshape the department just a little bit, to tweak it just a little bit, because we have right now Sheriff Fogel, uh, Chief Deputy Bailing, Tammy, myself, I think did a great job, but just to tweak it a little bit, um, I'd also like to give praise and recognition for work being performed on a monthly um, situation. I'd like to involve deputies in the development of new policies and review of the old policies. We have a ton of policies. I write the policies. I'm not in the patrol like these guys on a daily basis. I need their input. So I, I would like a committee to get them and we redo the policies and look at that. I'd like to actually have what is called an officer of the month recognition and a, a, a department, excuse me, a department award ceremony for work that's done. We don't praise our officers enough for going out there and risking their necks. I think they should get a pat on the back once in a while and say, hey guys, you did a nice job. 
And I'd also um, like to, on a minor something, just recognize birthdays and anniversaries of the employees and their families and say, hey, thank you, and thank you. All right, uh, two minutes isn't uh, nearly enough time to, to talk about the strengths of our department. Um, so I'm not, uh, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the strengths. Uh, uh, Sheriff Fogel, for approximately 12 years, has done a, an outstanding job organizing our department. I don't see an issue uh, with that. Uh, a couple of things that, that I would do uh, differently, um, one of them uh, being offering more public education out there. Um, I, I see uh, this county, and, and I'm not just picking on this county, I, th I think this is a, a statewide national problem as well as uh, illicit drug use and alcohol use. Um, I, I would like to see more public education being offered out there. And I'm not talking about just kids, I'm, I'm talking about uh, adults that might be interested in, um, the, you know, in attending these uh, seminars that we would offer. Um, internet safety, that, that's a huge thing right now, that's for kids. Um, I would like to see more public education being offered in that. Um, uh, crimes against the elderly, um, I, I think the elderly is a group of people that, that we often miss um, in law enforcement and we don't educate them enough. There, there are so many scams out there um, and, and I know that we, we do offer um, the media uh, w with a press release once in a while uh, alerting the, the elderly about these scams that are going around but but I, I would like to go beyond that and I would actually like to uh, to go to some of these uh, uh, residences where the elderly are and, and make a personal contact uh, a radio contact just doesn't cut it uh, the second thing I would like to see more of is is training and, and training in the sense of more specialized training I would like to see some of our deputies uh, be trained in for example, uh, like cell phone forensics or computer forensics um, or child abuse investigations. Right now I, I do, I, if I were to put a percentage on it, I probably do about 99% of our child abuse investigations. And, and I think it's important to train, peop, uh, train more people uh, to handle those types of crimes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carl Waterstreet will receive this next question first. How are you going to ensure your deputies are prepared to adequately recognize and deal with an individual with mental health issues? They are, up, whoa, got a little close there. Our deputies have already been trained. Um, there's continuing education that we do. There's 20, 24 hours a year we need to train our, our deputies. Uh, there are courses out there that I think our deputies can can take to uh, help our mentally handicapped people. Um, the the human resources or not human resources, but human services offers courses and uh, offers training in that. And I believe our deputies need to to go to a little bit more of that type of training. It's uh, all comes down to. Uh, having to deal with them and know what you're doing. And I think uh, training is a big key to it. Thank you. How are you going to ensure your deputies are prepared to adequately recognize and deal with an individual with mental health issues? I, I believe we already are. Uh, we've, we've all been trained on it and we've all dealt with uh, the, the mentally ill and and we've gone through the the training and we deal with human services and and can get them to get involved in in whatever we need to do uh, dealing with human services is the, the biggest thing we can do for for them they have uh, more training than we do we, we have our, our training, but it's not that level. And uh, that, that's, thank you. I agree, but I also disagree. And the reason I disagree is the officers have the basic training that for dealing with a mentally disabled person, but there's an additional training, it's called CIT, 
crisis intervention training that is offered through the state of Wisconsin. It's 40 hours. And I'd like to see every single deputy of this agency patrol detectives in the jail. It specially deals with how to handle someone that has a mental health issue. 10, per, 10 to 15 percent of our calls are, are mental health related calls. My officers need to know how to handle that person. Um, they need to know what the signs are. They need to know medication and the side effects. They need, my opinion, the CIT training. This would also give them how to de-escalate the situation. You have a party that if you walk up to them, a normal person is going to look at you and respond normally to you. But if you have someone with a mental disease, they do not respond that way. My officers, I keep saying mine, the officers are, are trained to handle the people, but I'd like to give them that extra training where they feel more comfortable dealing with someone so they know how to de-escalate or escalate if need be. So I'm a big believer of the CIT training. Um, again, it's only offered very limited. It, it's, it's 40 hours, but I'm a strong believer that, I, I, as I said, each deputy of the department should go through. Thank you. Yeah, me mental health is a, a, a huge concern. Uh, I, think it, I think there's a lot more mental health issues out there in our community than, than the layperson probably thinks. Um, and it needs to be addressed. And, and, and yes, we are uh, trained, I would say pretty basically, on, on dealing with people with mental illness. Um, but the, the, the department that, that is highly trained in that, Door County Department of Human Services, the community programs division within that, um, they are trained in that. And, and they are more than willing to sit down with us and talk with us and, and relay that training to us, which I think is invaluable. I, I have personally done that on occasion, where, where I would just give them a call, sit down with them for a half hour, and, and, and I would learn a ton during that half hour. Um, and I think our officers need to do more of that. I mean, that, that's free training, uh, giving us some ideas on, on how to deal with some of these people with mental illness, because they, they do oftentimes require um, you know, special treatment, if you will. Uh, in the school setting, when I'm in the schools, I, I, I have to uh, sometimes handle and deal with people with mental illness as well. Uh, one of the techniques that I personally use is I, I'm just upfront and honest with them. I look them in the eye and, and I tell them, I said, you know, I understand that, that you have some, some problems and, and I, I, I'm relying on you to tell me, you know, how, how you would like me to, to talk to you, how you would like me to approach this. And, and Nine times out of ten, they're, they're very uh, willing to communicate that with me, and, and things go very smoothly. I think they appreciate that, that honesty, um, that, that maybe I'm not as knowledgeable about that mental illness as I should be, and, and, I, and that goes a long ways. Thank you. I, I agree with um, Jeff on the CIT training. Actually, the CIT, train, CIT training has been around for numerous years. When I took over as the jail administrator, I quickly realized that mental health was a big issue in the jails. So I started to research what was available for staff training, and I came across, they call it CIP for correctional officers. It's basically the same concept. I vowed to send every single one of my officers through that training. And today, with the exception of my newest officer, everybody that works in the correctional facility has attended that training. They wear an insignia on their shirt that people with mental health, mental health issues recognize and understand that this person has been through the CIP training. I think every officer on patrol or jail should go through that. More and more today we deal with mental health issues both in corrections, in the jail, and I also feel dispatchers would greatly benefit from that training as well. So I do think investing in that training is important and it's just a fact of the matter, we have to deal with that on a regular basis. Human Services is a great department to work with, and we have a great relationship with them, but I don't think it's just their responsibility. Our officers are the ones out there dealing every day with these people, and that first response, that first five, ten minute interaction can mean the world to that individual that has mental health issues. So I would pursue the CIT training and make it mandatory part of the actual initial training before the officer gets cut loose to be on his own or his own on patrol. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Steve Dallara, we're 
will um, take this first question, the uh, next question. What is your position on county work release and electronic monitoring? What improvements, if any, could be made? I know uh, Sheriff Vogel has always been very strict on the electronic monitoring, and I pretty much agree with him. Um, when you have the electronic monitoring, you have to be on, on Huber. You're on Huber, 50% of your, your sentence has to be served before you can even apply for the electronic monitoring. After that, it gets reviewed by the sheriff, whether he approves it or not, and set, you have to serve 75% of your, your sentence before you would even be allowed to take it. There's a cost to the inmate to pay for the electronic monitoring plus a daily uh, fee. It, it, putting a, someone on electronic monitoring does not reduce our staff. We still have the same amount of people. It's not saving us a lot of money. Um, but I will give everyone a proper review and if, if there is a way we could save say they had a, a disability or something that we couldn't handle in the jail, that we could uh, put them on electronic monitoring and they could be better cared for at home. Thank you. I agree with Steve. Um, back in, in 2005 when we opened up our jail facility, our, our facility is 148 bed. We are not um, overcrowded. We are probably averaging between 70 to 80 inmates at this time. Electronic monitoring is a great tool for us if we are crowded or overcrowded. We still have to have the same staff there if we have 80 inmates or if we have 140 inmates. We still have to have the heat on. We still have to have everybody there. So as Steve said, it really doesn't save us money. To get on electronic monitoring, I agree, I would look at it on a less serious offense, but not on any serious offense, no way. I don't want somebody that is out in public that has the potential of re-harming someone or do something like that, no way. But if it's a very minor offense, and as Steve said, they have to be on Huber and they have to pay a fee, the problem is um, if we would, a lot of times on Huber, we don't uh, collect the fees, it's hard to get blood out of a turnip. So, you know, we don't recuperate the, the cost. So that's another issue is will we be able to recuperate the cost for the electronic monitoring. But I would look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. I would never rule it out, but I'd also again look at what is our, our, our staffing, what is our population, would it benefit the county? And if it doesn't benefit the county, I would not be in favor of it. Um, I would take a look at each case all individually. Thank you. I, I agree with Lieutenant Farley um, that, that this needs to be looked at at a case-by-case -case basis. Um, if, if the inmate is a violent offender, poses a risk to the community, absolutely 100% not. I, I, I don't want that person out and about in the community. Um, prior to prior to the release that the court uh, imposed um, however if it if it's not a violent crime if this is not a regular inmate um, if this is if this is someone that we can feel uh, comfortable releasing on electronic monitoring um, you know if everything is fitting together just right I guess I wouldn't see a major problem with it it's not going to be an economic savings uh, for the department I agree with uh, Steve and Jeff on that um, but I, I'm looking at it from a more rehabilitative um, viewpoint. Um, if these people can, can safely go out in the community, safely um, provide for their families, uh, rather than some of us taxpayers providing for their families, um, I think it's something worth exploring. Um, we, we need to, uh, we, we need to, they're, they're not providing for their families, they're not, they're not showing the community that they're capable of providing for their families 
when they're incarcerated in jail. Um, so it, it, if everything fits just right and it makes sense to, to trust them on, on electronic monitoring, I wouldn't have an issue with that. Um, but case by case basis. Thank you. Obviously overseeing corrections, I have a lot of experience in the <clears throat> electronic monitoring in Huber areas. Our, our current average daily population is 71 inmates and out of those 71, roughly 15 actually have Huber privileges. Are there some individuals that could possibly go on electronic monitoring? Probably. I do agree though with Sheriff Vogel and the way he analyzes and looks at who gets to go on electronic monitoring. It's not simple, he just looks at it and says no. Our Huber staff has to provide a packet of information to the sheriff that gives the individual's background, how many times they've been incarcerated, what they're incarcerated for, what their discipline record is within the department. And the sheriff has to make the tough decision because it's not just about leaving somebody out on electronic monitoring and being able to sleep at their house at night. At the end of the day, it's risk management. And if a violent offender gets put out on a bracelet and something takes place within the community while on a bracelet, the sheriff ultimately and the county is responsible for those actions. So again, I totally agree with what we're doing. I think we have a sound policy. You could take our policy and probably compare it to many others throughout the state. Many sheriffs have the same opinion. Again, like Jeff and, and the others have said, if we were facing overcrowding, if there's a unique situation where it's a medical issue or a, a family situation that we needed to do it, absolutely, I think you could do something like that. But we don't save all that much money going on electronic monitoring. The inmate would have to pay though up front for the electronic monitoring, so we would collect the fees, that is our policy. Um, other than that, I think it, it's case by case and every situation needs to be analyzed. Thank you. I agree with everybody else. Uh, it has to be on a case by case basis. Um, again, violent crimes uh, compared to unviolent crimes is definitely uh, a factor in all this. Um, I also believe though that uh, the judge in the court system should have a huge say in whether electronic monitoring should be even allowed. Um, they know what, they see the violent crimes or what the sentences are or what the, the can be opposed. So uh, as far as the electronic monitoring goes, everything is, again, it isn't cost effective. And it, if it's working the way it is now, if it's not broke, why fix it? Thank you. Jeff Farley, we'll see the next question first. How big a problem is drug and or alcohol use in Door County? What can your department do to assist with pre prevention and intervention programs? Drug and, several years ago, never heard of the drug heroin. Within the last couple months, we've had several deaths from heroin overdoses. Heroin is coming up here to Door County. We need to take a serious look at how we can prevent that. On a minor scale or, or lower scale, there are groups that meet um, regularly to talk about ways that we can reduce um, drug and alcohol within the county. Um, we meet, uh, the Ray Pelrine, the, the district attorney meets, the sheriff meets, along with other people. Um, we look at ways. We developed last year for like the, the festivals, a packet where each township um, that sells the liquor license or has an event, their town clerk came and got a packet. The packet displayed suggestions how to properly enforce, how to look for signs of underage drinking. It has to be though a community together. I mean, the sheriff's department can do everything they can to try to prevent drug and abuse, but without you folks that are sitting out there right now helping us in the sheriff's department, we can't do it alone. It has to be a community effort where everybody's working together, trying to solve the problem. 
You folks are the eyes and the ears. You're the ones that have that sees the neighbor having people coming to their residence at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock, then all of a sudden leaving. You need to tell us that so that we can put our resources into that area. So it needs to be a law enforcement, courts, stiffer sentences, stiffer fines, but it needs to be all of us. Thank you. Okay, I think we, we touched a little bit on, on drugs and alcohol, at least I did a little bit earlier. Um, and, and I don't, again, I don't want to pick on Door County. I don't think this is just a Door County problem. I think this is a statewide national problem even uh, with drug and alcohol abuse. Um, I, I, I would propose that we need to do a lot more education uh, regarding uh, drug and alcohol abuse. I am the DARE officer in the fifth and sixth grade levels at the schools. Um, like I said, I, I just came back from Lake Geneva today from a DARE conference. Um, DARE offers uh, a middle school curriculum that I would like to explore and, and, and possibly get into the middle school um, and even in a high school curriculum, get it into the high schools. I, I, think, it's, uh, I think it's important that we, we address the, these issues with, with our young people. Um, they're our future and, and I think uh, going forward we really need to address it uh, with them. Uh, heroin, uh, like Jeff had mentioned, is just an absolute uh, uh, taking us by storm, uh, not just here in Door County, but statewide. Uh, we're actually in Door County, we're, we're probably a lot luckier than, than a lot of other counties uh, within the state. I am currently uh, looking at a program uh, that Brad Schimmel, he's a candidate uh, for Attorney General, the top cop in Wisconsin, uh, he's proposed, it's an acronym, it, it's called uh, STOP, and it stands for Support Teaching Opiates Prevention. Uh, heroin being an opiate. Uh, so that, that's something that I'm, I'm actually, I'm, my wife gets mad at me sometimes because I'm spending a lot of time on the internet uh, researching this at home and uh, I'm not spending enough time with her. But, uh, uh, but I think it's very important. I think it's something that needs to be addressed before it gets out of hand. A, a, a startling statistic that I heard at my conference today is that uh, w when people become addicted to heroin, it takes a very short time to become addicted to heroin. Um, and, and they go to get that help. 90% of those people that, that went to get the help relapse, and, and they go back to using heroin. Uh, to me, that's just startling. We, we need to catch them before they start. Thank you. Again, we're working in the correctional division, we see a lot of the effects, the long-term effects of alcohol and drug abuse. Uh, we screen all of our inmates for, and question them on their use of alcohol and drugs. Over 50% of our inmate population report that they have a history of drug or alcohol abuse problems. So it's, it's not a problem that's unique to Door County, but I, I think there's a couple things we can do to help improve that. One of the things I believe strongly in is adding school resource officers full time. I think what that allows us to do is to work with the youth on a regular basis. Chris does a great job with D.A.R.E., but he cannot be in the schools every day. I think every day those kids deserve somebody in their schools that's guiding them and providing mentorship and telling them when it comes to the path, which path are you going to take? Are you going to go left or are you going to go right? I, str I believe strongly in that. Uh, I think there's many programs out there that I've taken a look at that I think would work. I think each school is going to be unique and I would leave that up to the school resource officer to work with the educators, the teachers at the school, and community to put a program together that works for that particular school district. My daughter just turned eight years old. She can tell you, don't do drugs, you know, don't smoke cigarettes, don't drink alcohol. But I'm worried when she's 10 and 15 years old, when she's standing there and she has to make that decision, do I, am I at a beer party? Do I drink that beer? I'm hoping that getting school resource officers in on a full-time basis will give the ability to educate the students at all ages from pre-K all the way through high school and provide a positive role model for those children. Thank you. Drugs and alcohol is definitely a, po a problem, like Chris said, throughout the entire state. Um, we are very fortunate in our county here to have uh, uh, drug recognition experts, we have two of them. Uh, one of them is uh, one of the top 10 in the state. I'm proposing that he goes out and, and does education on drugs and alcohol. 
I'm also would like to see a canine brought back into the county. Uh, a canine that would be on a regular basis used to look for these drugs that come into the county. You know, we're definitely a tourist county. It's uh, no doubt about that. And a lot of the drugs and stuff come in from down south and uh, for all we know across the water. Having a dog, having a canine, that is not only for drugs, but for search and rescue is a definite uh, plus. This cost of this canine would be uh, no cost to the taxpayers of, at all. What I'm proposing is to go out and seek donations, um, grants, and do fundraisers to get this dog. So, and as far as uh, going through the schools, the dog will be readily available to do that. So uh, to combat the, the uh, drugs and alcohol, and uh, I know I'm leaning more towards the drug thing, but uh, uh, canine, I think, would be the best bet. Thank you. As everyone said, drugs are a problem for every department. Uh, and we're not going to solve the drug problem with investigations and arrests alone. It, it, it needs education. Um, as Carl said, we have the two DRE officers. I would put our drug investigators and both DREs putting on presentations in the, in the high schools. Uh, Chris does a great job in the, in the D.A.R.E. program, and that's fifth grade. Kids start getting into high school, start getting away from home a little more, and need a little more guidance. Uh, giving presentations on things like heroin and, and meth and things like that it is needed in the high schools. And getting the DREs and, and the drug investigators to give presentations to the, the students and the parents and advise them what to look for, it, it's needed. Um, we will support the drug task force with Dorian Kiwani. They do a great job. Uh, our department will continue having updated training because uh, as the drug use changes, so, so does the training need to change. Um, we can develop uh, relationships with other departments, and state and federal, uh, because the drugs don't know boundaries. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, Chris Neville will take this next question first. How do you propose to address what appears to be a growing vandalism problem in the county? Growing vandalism problem. I, you know, I, I, I'm not 100% convinced that, that there's a growing problem. There, there's been a problem uh, for a long time. And, and sometimes when, when things are fresh in our mind, we think right away, we, we kind of jump the gun, so to speak, uh, that it's a growing problem. So I'm not so sure that it's a growing problem. Um, vandalism is, uh, you know, this day and age with, with as much uh, surveillance equipment that's out there, uh, people with uh, smartphones and, and capturing video and, and photographs, um, uh, you know, I think, I, I think it, in a lot of ways it, it's tougher for people to get away with uh, vandalism. Uh, in the state of Wisconsin here we call it criminal damage to property actually. Um, but I, I think we do a good job. Um, I, I wish I had a clearance uh, percentage for you that we have at the Sheriff's Department. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Uh, but if I were to guess, it, it's, it's probably quite high. Um, like I said, because of, you know, I know firsthand uh, working with the schools that kids talk. Kids talk all the time. And I think actually that's one of the, as being the DARE officer in the county, um, having that rapport and relationship uh, that I do have uh, with the kids um, oftentimes I get tips uh, from people. A lot of times it comes in anonymously, uh, but they'll give me they'll give me a tip and they'll say, you know, hey, you know, little Joey, uh, you know, went out last night and, and uh, uh, you know took a baseball bat to that mailbox or whatever the case might be, uh, which which does you know it, it's a it's a huge thing and it really helps us uh, clear some of those vandalism crimes. But uh, uh, like I said, I, I I'm not convinced that vandalism is on the rise. I, I just know that there there's been some recent ones and and then people kind of. Uh, think right away that it's on the rise. Thank you. 
I would have to agree with Chris. I, I don't necessarily know that it's on the rise. Obviously, it is an issue. Anytime somebody's property is destroyed purposefully, uh, as a law enforcement agency, we need to take a look at that. I believe our patrol officers do an excellent job keeping their eyes and ears open on the street. They're out there every day. They have contacts throughout the community. As, as Chris said, we have technology today that allows us to do surveillance on, on properties and different things. As a sheriff, I would encourage the public, if you're out and about and you see something that just doesn't make sense, call it in. Our dispatch center is open 24-7. They'll gladly take your call and we'll take an officer and look at the situation. I think educating the public about vandalism, the best thing you can do for that is speak up. If something doesn't look right, say something. Don't be afraid to call. They sometimes get bored and they like to hear somebody's voice, so <laughs> don't be afraid to call. Thank you. I agree. Vandalism, I don't think, is on the rise. Uh, what you see when you think, when you see a lot of vandalism is a lot of times it's mailbox damage. Being a patrol officer for the last 22 years and plus in the in Door County here, uh, it's nothing worse than see one mailbox and then start going down and start counting mailboxes, especially along Bayshore Drive. Um, that is a rise in vandalism, but it doesn't happen every day. Um, I think that uh, the best way we can combat any type of vandalism or anything like that would be years ago they used to have what they called the neighborhood watch programs. I'm proposing that we try to bring some of that neighborhood watch programs back. And the way that, that program works is there's usually a captain that is in charge of a group of people. And it's a, te it's a telephone thing. Even, even with cell phones, I'm sure it's going to be even better with cell phones. So uh, as far as that goes, if we can start the neighborhood watch program again, uh, there's probably a great possibility all this mailbox damage and all this other damage that happens in vandalism can probably start sliding down a little bit. Thank you. I believe the best way is to get the word out to the people. Uh, through the media, radio, if there's something going on, um, you need to know about it so you can call us. Uh, so many times we hear, well, we don't want to bother you. Uh, you know, it's late and, and we're looking for things to do at night. You know, we'd be more, we'd be more than happy to come and, and check something out that you see as suspicious. Um, if, you, if you call in, we'll come, we'll check it out. Um, we, we provide the extra patrol if you have a, if there's a problem area. We're always checking all extra patrol areas. Every night we have a list that's on our computer um, that people have uh, concerns about and we're more than happy to check on them. And the more the public knows by getting it out there, if there's a certain area that had a problem overnight, you know, some of the parks sometimes get vandalized um, and, and we get extra patrol requests, we check them out every night. So just watch your neighborhood, be a good neighbor, uh, and, and that's the best you can do. Thank you. As the other candidate said, that statistic-wise for the Door County Sheriff's Department, our vandalism has not really increased that much. I know over the weekend um, there was a report of some eggs in the Egg Harbor area that were damaged, and we had a sign that was damaged in a, a private residence. But again, um, our, our statistics show that uh, vandalism is not on, on, on an increase. Um, several years ago, um, we incorporated what's called the community police concept where Pacific officers are placed into Pacific zones within the community and the intent to place these officers in that zone was for that officer to get to know everybody that's in that zone. They were instructed to go to every single business to introduce themselves to meet the people that live within that zone. This county is divided into three zones, major zones. It's actually then subdivided into two more zones. They are responsible to know the people. Vandalism will, can stop if the patrol officers, again going back to the community, you know, as, as Chris said, kids talk. 
The officers get to know the kids. They pull up and talk with the kids. Kids will tell them that's how we solve the majority of our vandalism is through somebody else talking. And going back to the schools, I agree. An officer in the schools is the best way because he has that rapport. He f sees those kids on a daily basis. He also, years when these kids have graduated and are out of school, will come up to the DARE officer and will talk to the DARE officer. But put the officer in the school, keep him in the school, have my, the patrol people get, again, stay in their community zones and get to know the kids, the businesses, and the people, and vandalism will um, be reduced. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Tammy Stenner will take this question next. How would you deal with the increased demands put on law enforcement during the summer months, and what are the major traffic concerns? Obviously, we all live here, and so we know that the, the traffic is a main issue uh, during the tourist season. I would have to go to my patrol lieutenant and talk with him or her and decide on what best way to address the issues. As I said straight from the beginning, I don't have a whole lot of patrol experience, but there's a lot of great men and women that do that every day, and they're going to be able to help tell me what we need to do to try to fix the problems. Um, so I don't know the statistics of the traffic accidents or anything of that nature, but I do think, like I said, working together with other people that do that every day, for their, uh, we would be able to find out a resolution to solve a problem if there are any. Thank you. Could you repeat the question, please? Yes. How would you deal with the increased demands put on law enforcement during the summer months? What are the major traffic concerns? Right now we have a uh, minimum staffing that we use on the patrol in the patrol division. I am proposing that uh, we possibly train some of our sworn reserves to go to specific areas where the traffic is heavier or where the population is heavier to do extra, like extra patrol. They are certified because they are carrying weapons. Um, it's a matter of training them in uh, somewhat of more of a patrol procedure the way we do it. As far as, uh, again, as far as traffic goes, uh, kind of is what it is. It depends on an area that has the festival. It depends on what the area is. That area would get the, the additional patrol, would get the additional officers. That, again, would not be a huge cost to the Sheriff's Department because we are using reserve officers. Thank you. Uh, as Carl said, we have minimum staffing that we have to maintain in the summer months so that we have enough people out and about. Um, we can only have one person off uh, shift for vacation. We, we have to have four on. So just u utilizing that, cutting back on, on overtime um, gives us the, the best coverage we can get. Also using, uh, using the constables, Constable Merrill in Bailey's Harbor and Andy Crowell in, in Gibraltar, uh, we can, they're asking for things to do. They want to be used and, and I would use them to the fullest extent we can. They, they, they're out there, they're qualified and they're, and they're good people and they work hard and want, they want the work. Um, using the reserves also, um, we do that at, at, at the parades and, and festivals and continue to do that. Thank you. It would be great to sit here and say that I wish I could <coughs> add about 10 more officers to each shift, but we know that's not possible because I don't want to pay the bill also. Um, it's July 4th. It's the busiest day of the... the the season up here, we have traffic, we have traffic concerns. Um, events, well, the, the county is getting larger events. Door County Triathlon is an example of one. Um, it's difficult because you, you're kind of balancing a fine line between assigning additional patrol deputies to that area of high concentration, 
but when you assign that patrol deputy to that area, you're reducing your patrol deputy status in another area. So we have been, for the last X number of years, having kind of a balancing act of that fine line. And what we do is we look at staffing analysis, but we look at traffic analysis also. We put up that speed board not just because it shows you your speed, but it also tells us, me, the, the, the field service lieutenant, which, what is the speed, the average speed of vehicles, how many vehicles do I have, when are my violations taking place. I can then assign patrol deputies to that area in those given days, in that given time period, so that you know, we know exactly, instead of just having the deputies in this area, this area, we put them specifically into areas of, of, of need, okay? Um, to reduce traffic, it isn't gonna happen. We need to look at ways. I know the state's looking at, you know, roundabouts. I'm not, I, that roundabout kind of scares me, especially if you go to Green Bay and you, see, you go through that triple one, uh, you know? So, personally, I, you know, I'm, I'll stay away from that issue, but um, we need to do the continue the balancing act to keep the people and direct the people where they need to be. Thank you. The younger you are, the easier roundabouts are to use. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, were, we won't go. We, we won't go there. We won't go there. Um, as far as uh, uh, traffic goes, and summer being a you know very busy time uh, for traffic in Door County, obviously, um, I think the biggest deterrent um, for people to to start paying more attention to slow down is is when they're driving along and they see those uh, those red and blues out there and, and realize that hmm, there's a there's a cop that's watching us um, I would propose um, you know we, we in the county we have a, a take-home squad program um, all the deputies have a, have a take-home squad um, we're not providing any sort of deterrent um, with those squads that are being unused sitting in a driveway um, I, I, I think we could put them out in a boat. I think we could put them on the side of the road. I think we could, you know, put them in a farm access or it, w whatever, wherever it makes sense uh, to put them. Um, we, the reason we have a uh, take-home squad program is, is we want the officers to be readily available uh, if an emergency happens. And, and I think we would still be able, you know, I, I think if we were to set policies that, that these cars put in these ideal locations, are, as long as they're relatively close to that deputy's residence, I think we could make it work. I mean, we have a couple of deputies I know in Sister Bay. Uh, we have several uh, in Southern Door County. Uh, I live in the city. Um, but th those squads aren't doing any good sitting in a driveway when they're not being used. So let's, let's put them out there and, and we, can, we can put a, a, a dummy deputy in. When I say a dummy, I mean a fake one, not, not a real one. Uh, but put a, you know, put a dummy deputy in, in the driver's seat of that car. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> that was the last question. I didn't notice the time. But um, I'll give you all a moment to prepare your closing statements while I make a few announcements to the audience. Um, there is a table with free league literature. Please consider joining us. There is another for candidate literature that will be set up. Uh, we hope this evening has been helpful to you as a voter and trust you are better informed to vote intelligently. On the, somewhere on the back table, there is information about where this videotape will be published. So if you want to grab one of those to um, forward to your friends, that would be great. Please remember to vote on Tuesday, August 12th in primary election and Tuesday, November 4th in the general election. Take a friend to vote, especially young people. Remember, your vote counts. Please stay and visit with the candidates. And now we'll do our closing statements with Carl Waterstreet starting. Okay. You have five minutes. Okay. You've uh, listened to everybody here, what we had to say about our, what we think, all the questions. And uh, 
What I am proposing for the Sheriff's Department is uh, to work with all the different entities of the sheriff of the county, the uh, fire departments, uh, the city police, and us. I want to work with them together. Um, in look at what resources we have, look at what we can use from each other. Uh, in turn, that would save money for everybody's department, and it would also save money for the taxpayer. I'm, I'm also proposing a canine for the county at no cost to the taxpayer. Again, I'd like to fund this with uh, donations and uh, grants and fundraisers. Senior citizen education is very important. It was mentioned about the scams and about the fraud that is out there. I'm proposing that as sheriff that I would take that on personally. I would go visit the senior center, um, see what uh, their concerns are, and uh, go to investigations, go to our patrol, find out what type of different scams are out there to basically tell them this is what you got to be looking for. Uh, education for our schools, basically we talked about that. We talked about alcohol, we talked about the drugs. Again, uh, working with uh, the school system itself, uh, being a driver's ed instructor, I have the opportunity to work with a lot of 15 and 16 year old uh, students. These students sometimes tell me stuff that I really shouldn't, I don't want to hear, but I, still also, I also get a lot of information that way from uh, a lot of times it's after the fact that things happen, parties and things like that. But uh, I think we need uh, the idea of putting a, a uniformed person in the school, I think kind of deters a lot of people from coming up to talk or a lot of students coming up to talk to that, that individual. I think if you put somebody in there that is ununiformed and like I usually am when I'm in the driver's ed car, you can get a lot more information. I am proposing also to start, to try to start a regional, a regional task force for the ICAC, which is Internet Crimes Against Children. Uh, and uh, special victims unit. Um, protecting our children should be number one. My oldest son is uh, involved a lot with the ICAC system, and uh, he is peer-to-peer uh, -peer certified or licensed to work the software. I get a lot, a lot of information from him. Um, training our telecommunicators, I believe they need to be trained a little bit more extensive in law enforcement uh, to possibly deter, determine whether or not uh, a lot of crime, uh, if there's a crime committed or if there's a, a civil issue, a lot of civil issues, our deputies a lot of times are wasting our time by uh, going to these civil issues other than to just to be a mediator. Now a lot of times if we have the time, there's not a thing wrong with it. I'd rather be a mediator than have it have a civil issue turn into a crime. I feel I'm the most well-rounded candidate for sheriff. I have 35 years in public safety, uh, 26 years in law enforcement, and 15 years as a volunteer firefighter. And obviously, I told you I uh, retired as a lieutenant. Um, with all that, ex with the experience of uh, having both fire and law enforcement, it's uh, a lot of times easier for me to make a decision on a lot of things. I was, uh, I don't know if you want to call it fortunate enough or not, but uh, uh, 2010 I was uh, given the Heroism Award for saving some children while my firefighting experience took over there. Um, I want to be a sheriff for the people of Door County and I also want to have open communications for my staff. I want to listen to what they have to say. I also know that this is the ultimate decision, of course, is mine. And I know that is the type of leadership that Door County needs. Thank you. 
again, thank you for the League of Women Voters and everyone for coming out tonight. I have chosen law enforcement as my vocation and I very much appreciate the opportunity I've had these past 23 years on the department and serving my fellow citizens. It is truly an honor and a special privilege. To be of service to another in need, to offer compassion and support in a time of tragedy or loss, to safeguard and protect during a time of violence, and to simply be present and ready. I have learned and I have grown much, and I owe that all to the community that is Door County. One of the most rewarding aspects of my job has been the development of new officers. As a field training officer, I was tasked with teaching the proper procedures for the department. However, being a deputy is much more than policy and procedure. Being a deputy of the law requires a sense of fairness. Being a deputy of the law requires resolve and often firmness. But above all, being a deputy requires compassion. Being a deputy requires a love for the job, a love for the county, and the country as though they are family, because as a deputy of the law, they are. This is what I believe and what I attempt to instill in the deputies I trained, and I take pride in seeing them grow into that position. I want them to have an opportunity to grow and have a voice in the direction of the department, as have I, and they too have the potential to be future leaders. I intend to carry the same commitment and belief to the sheriff's position. I understand the responsibility that requires. I understand that it will require the respect and support of my fellow deputies and staff. And I believe that a good leadership requires an open mind, careful consideration, and input from quality professionals who I work with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I have grown up in this community. It is my family. And I would greatly appreciate your continued support to protect and serve as your sheriff. Mm -hmm. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Steve. For the past 28 years in law enforcement, I have worked as hard as possible serving the people of Door County. I am very proud of the Sheriff's Department and honored to be a member of the Door County Sheriff's Department. I believe though that it is the utmost honor though to serve and protect the citizens of Door County. I do not take this responsibility very lightly. So that is why I have answered every page, every phone call, and fulfilled every task and, and duty that has come my way. Many of these calls come in the middle of the night in form of a fatal traffic accident, late night drug buy, or an officer needs assistance. The Door County Sheriff's Department is made up of many dedicated employees who put themselves in harm's way to protect you. These men and women are my heroes and deserve much of the credit for your safety. With the assistance of the county board, numerous volunteer organizations, and the citizens of Door County, we have allowed us to walk our street at night and live our lives and raise our children in a safe place. From the start of my career, I had one goal in mind, that goal to form a partnership with the people to make our community a safe and enjoyable place to live. Without your approval, without your support, we, the police, cannot effectively do the task you have asked us to perform. My promise to you, I will do everything possible to keep Door County a safe place to live and you can you raise your family. My 32 years of law enforcement experience has prepared me to take the next step forward, I believe. I am prepared to lead this agency. I have the experience I'm working my way up through the ranks and I have the education certifications in such areas as management, crisis management, FBI executive development, major event security planning, preparing proper budgets for law enforcement, skilled investigator, major crime scene investigation, arson, technical accident investigator, and child sexual forensic interview. Challenges for law enforcement are greater than ever. The modern times and technology has changed the type of crimes deputies now see and handle. As we had mentioned earlier, heroin drug overdoses, death are on the rise here in the county, along with the theft and abuse of prescription medication. Identity theft is one case I see come across my desk on a daily basis. We must keep fighting the war on drugs, 
by continuing to provide specialized training to each and every officer and by establishing an aggressive enforcement stance with the offenders. Together, we can work to keep Door County a safe community, one where we still feel secure at night and not afraid to walk around or leave our doors unlocked. If elected Sheriff of Door County, I intend to uphold the high standards in law enforcement the Door County community deserves and has come to expect by working with the deputies and citizens together. I will serve the community, lead the department, and make decisions based on experience, integrity, and dedication. Thank you for your time and support. I thank you everyone uh, for being here tonight. We're creeping up on nine o'clock already and it's, it's a weekday night and, and it's quite impressive the turnout that we, that we have here today. I am also very uh, proud to be a member of the, the Door County Sheriff's Department for the past 15 years. Um, it, it's an awesome department and I'd actually like to take 30 seconds out of my five minute slot here um, to, for, for you guys to uh, show a, a round of applause for the, for the person that made it such an awesome department. Uh, our pending um, sheriff, our, sheriff, our current sheriff is uh, pending retirement and, and I think we owe him a round of applause. So I definitely thank him for, for um, making the transition for, for the new sheriff uh, should be relatively easy uh, because we're, we're definitely going into a, a, a good thing here uh, in Door County. My big, the, the thing I'm campaigning on is, is education. I, I, I want to uh, educate rather than rehabilitate. I, I want to catch the people, I want to catch the kids, the young adults, um, I want to catch them at an age. Uh, where we can prevent them from using in the first place because I gave you a statistic earlier um, about once they start using, it's almost too late. Uh, so we, we need to do what we can uh, now uh, to prevent them from starting in the first place. Um, I've been the DARE officer for the last 10 years. I absolutely love the program. Um, you know, some people tell me that, well, Chris, are, are you sure it, uh, you know, it lessens underage drinking or lessens drug use uh, amongst kids? And, and D.A.R.E. is not all about that. It's encouraging kids to make good decisions. Um, I, I'll show you, uh, I'll share a story with you guys. Uh, several years ago, um, what happened is, is I was involved in a child sexual assault uh, investigation. It, it was heartbreaking. Uh, the child's father was sexually assaulting um, her for quite some time. And, and during that investigation, uh, she looked at me in the eyes and, and she said, Officer Neville, that's what I'm known at, at the schools. She said, Officer Neville, I, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting choked up a little bit, but uh, she, she told me that she would never had disclosed the sexual abuse that she was enduring had it not been for that, for, for, for me being her dare officer. And, and to me, that, that story alone really goes to show that dare works. Uh, like I said, Dare, Dare has worked wonders for me as far as receiving anonymous tips uh, for property crimes, uh, for other, for even violent crimes, and and I want to, I I, I love being the juvenile officer. I, I've achieved my uh, my career goal already as being the juvenile officer, but I'm ready to take that next step after 10 years. I'm not going to be able to give it up. I know that. Uh, I'm going to continue uh, to be in the schools. I'm going to continue uh, to shadow uh, whoever might take my spot if I'm elected sheriff. And, and I'm going to be uh, very active in the school system. We need our kids to make good decisions, not just for themselves, but for us. Thank you. Before I start my closing, I'd just like to take a quick moment to thank my fellow candidates. I, I'm so proud that we all maintained a positive uh, campaign and had showed respect to each other throughout this entire thing. So however that shakes out in the end, I am very proud to sit up here with this group of people. For me, my life and work opportunities throughout the years have greatly impacted my decision to run for sheriff and give back to this strong community. I believe in the following things. Accountability, 
The sheriff is responsible for an annual operating budget of slightly over $8 million. With my numerous years of budgeting experience, I will be able to effectively and efficiently manage the office's budget. I understand the importance of implementing good manage management practices and making difficult decisions on spending to safeguard against unnecessary spending. As a mother and a lieutenant, I believe strongly in school safety and youth outreach. The children truly are our future. I do not look at that as just another cliche. I do plan, if elected, to assign a full-time school resource officer to the schools that are willing to have one. I just don't talk about school safety. I have a plan to accomplish it without increasing the budget. I would like to start off with a pilot school, having the officer work with educators, community leaders, and other law enforcement agencies to develop programming to resolve the problems affecting all youth from 4K or pre-K to high school. Analyzing the current juvenile trends I think is extremely important and then working with parents, educators, clergy and other professionals to develop programming that fo focuses on juven juvenile issues. The primary goal is, should be to keep as many juveniles out of the court and jail systems as possible. As a community, I feel we have an obligation to provide a safe learning environment for our children so they have the opportunity to learn and grow reaching their fullest potential. Who knows, maybe one of them will be one of our sheriff in the future. Combating crime, we live in a world that is constantly changing. We face new challenges in law enforcement every day. I believe strongly in being proactive and being open to new ideas on how to deal with issues. I also believe in te today in technology and it's important to stay current with our technology trends. I would vow to continue to work proactively on internet-based internet crimes against children and seniors. Earlier this year, Sheriff Vogel added an, additional, added an additional drug investigator position, which I totally agree with, and I plan to keep in place. Drug-related incidents are on the rise. Heroin-related overdoses and deaths are becoming issues for ma major issues in many communities, and Door County is no different. Operating while intoxicated continues to be an issue. The effects on the community can be far-reaching. I feel as a sheriff, we need to continue with strict enforcement and work to effectively educate and inform the public on the dangers of driving while impaired. I believe strongly in collaboration and coordination. I will maintain, develop, and implement programs that effectively solve issues through partnerships and collaboration with our community partners. Officer training and education is something I feel, I feel greatly about. I will continue to lead by recognizing the most valuable asset to any organization is its people. Through motivation, mentoring, accountability, and recognition, our organization will thrive and operate at its highest levels. I vow to foster an environment where individuals are encouraged not only to reach their potential, but to exceed it. Just as I had, I would plan on assisting individuals to achieve professional growth and development. I believe it's essential to help ensure, as an agency, we are prepared to meet the needs of today and the challenges of tomorrow. Throughout my career, I've had the opportunity to attend numerous trainings in a wide variety of law enforcement and leadership subjects. I've also served on many community, community committees statewide to improve law enforcement services, inmate care, and officer safety. As part of the administrative team working closely with Sheriff Vogel and Chief Deputy Bailey and Lieutenant Farley for numerous years, I have a clear understanding of the operations and what it takes to continue to provide high quality law enforcement services here in Door County. After 21 years with the department, I have the opportunity to learn and grow as a leader. My proven leadership and years of outstanding service within the Sheriff's Office and our community makes me the right person to become the next Sheriff of Door County. I recognize the role of the Sheriff as an important one within our community. Most importantly though, through my years of leadership, I know greatness cannot be achieved by just one. It takes a group of dedicated men and women who are willing to carry out the duties of the Sheriff's Office each and every day. I am so proud to say our department is full of individuals that bring professionalism and honor to the badge each and every day. It would be my honor and support. It would be my honor and privilege to get the opportunity to lead them into the future. Thank you. Thank you, candidates, for being willing to run for Sheriff and for to serve if elected. Thank you to all of you for attending and participating in this democratic process. Let's have a round of applause for the candidates for Joe County.